let your body go hungry heart it's not easy to start over i've been there a couple of times starting over no the when the night comes over you rest is in deep you will shed that skin like a long run up here to stay still take the smallest breath the shortest steps it's enough take it easy and let your feelings out don't push them aside So I'm doing a bit of an experiment here. They're both the same bread recipe. This one has basil and oregano flakes and some ground rosemary. And this one has dehydrated minced onion. So our daily bread today is this. What if your true value, worth, and measure was measured by you, of you, as you, the witness, choosing to be the fullness of the almighty I am that I am through you? I started deconstructing that front garden. I'm preparing to move. the corner you'll notice some wood that was the edging that was all around here I dug all that up I took as much straw off as I can everything has been removed including the roses the comfrey is the next thing to be removed and that's going to happen because I'm going to cut this compost right down to ground level and I'm going to throw dirt over top of the compost and plant the comfrey right into this compost this will now be a garden And everything that, hi. 
everything that was in that garden. This is a comfrey. I put it here. I put my chives here. I put bloody dock there. I put catnip there. I put two of the comfrey in that container. They, everything looks wilty. It's just because it's hot and it, that's what happens when you transplant. Coming back here, this is the red creeping pine that was growing on my stone walkway. I dug it up and put it around my fruit trees in the back here, as well as a bloody dock, and I put one of the strawberry plants in there. Uh, that will cover the ground. It will help to keep moisture in. They don't have deep roots, except for maybe the bloody dock, so it won't really interfere with the tree too much. I took one of my bloody dock and put it under here because these two gardens are not moving right now. The next thing I'm going to do is remove the stone walkway and this arbor, and then essentially I'm just going to put dirt all over this and the grass can grow up, and this will be back to the way it was. The compost box that was no longer is. The salsa garden that once was no longer is. All the top compost is under all that soil, so I dug two big holes and buried it. And then the rest of the soil was just really fertile, so I planted three comfrey and one of the girls there. The arbor that once was no longer is. It's been a long day and I still have many hours to go before I rest, but first I need to eat. Today I'm making egg witches with fermented basil, mayonnaise pesto, some grated cheese and some homemade barbecue sauce. I'm simply warming this in the oven. I've added some fermented carrot coins, and now I'm warming a sirloin tip steak for myself and some scallop potatoes for Dawn. Can you come in? Come on. I have tomato plants that I haven't potted yet, so I'm gonna put the tomato plants in first through these the few bags that I'm gonna keep and I'm gonna plant everything else, such as the bee balm and all of that, in amongst all this. Now here's the thing. A lot of people think you can't grow things close together. You can, providing that they're all similar heights, they actually act as support for each other. And this is something that you have to be really mindful of when you're using a raised garden bed or you're using something like this, like a mega grow bag, or any kind of container that you're going to plant some small garden in. So now that I have the tomato plants in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start between that white one and where the less mess green one is, all those up forward. I'm going to start bringing those plants back and distributing it through all of these grow bags so that all of these grow bags are full and then all of that can be removed. In the process of removing those bags, Dom's already in the front removing all the straw so that all the soil that I take from these bags after I've moved the plants, I can now start moving that onto the front lawn. Oh, Gypsy! Come on, Pip. Come on. Buffy. Come on, that a girl. Come on, girls. We leave no cat behind. Hi, Pip. Hello. You smell somebody? Oh, you do. You smell somebody. Yes. It's like there should not be those other cats on this property. No.
said my dawn told me that the reason that this process appears to be taking me so long, as I am deconstructing, I'm already creating in my mind my future garden. And that's why I'm taking my time. I'm really analyzing what I'm leaving behind and what I'm taking with me. So it's like, yes, no, maybe piles. Yeah, that's what I'm doing with the gardens. You know, it's interesting because I thought these grow bags that I would be growing food in them this year. At least that was a thought that I had this year. But when I look at my earliest videos from before last year, I wanted to make dirt and that's what I've done. I've made prime dirt. So I've decided to keep one of these bags just as dirt because I have over, I don't know, two, three hundred fruit and nut trees upstairs on the balcony that are going to need to go into pots and they're going to need very rich soil to live in until they can be permanently transplanted into the food forest. Only the, the dirt that needs to go on the front lawn is going to go on the front lawn and everything else I'm feeding back into the front gardens. to the gardens that I've already created. Also looking at some of the grow pots that I have. Yeah, just kind of recognizing that what you first think more than likely is the initial message. It's not coincidental that I wanted to create dirt because without soil, nothing can grow. I think this might be the analogy of you create your new earth. We create a new earth, a new heaven and earth, when we learn that soil isn't just something that you grow a plant in. You are the garden. So what kind of soil are you allowing yourself to grow in? And what do you need to be, do and have to make it grow more? If you look at probiotics, it's everything that's for life that comes together. So if you don't like probiotic fermented foods, and even if you do, maybe that's more the, the metaphor for God showing us how to create new soil, how to create richer soil, microbiome. So what's the microbiome that you be that makes up you and your body? What soil are you allowing yourself to create, inhabitate, inhabit? and to be do have in, and what else is possible? As somebody who's gardened for years, decades, I still am amazed whenever I get that little spirit whisper to try something different, try something new, and I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll try that. And then I do it and it's like, well, why didn't I think of that, right? Have you ever done that? You hear something, it's not a person outside of you, you hear a message and you do it and you look at it, it's like, wow, well, that was a lot easier. See what I did? Two o'clock, I just got in. I look like a mess, but hey, that's part of gardening. Uh, the cats have to be fed. I have a package that arrived. I'm famished and I needed something to drink because it's really hot and I'm thirsty. Today I'm having barbecue ribs, but I have to warm it up first. These are ribs that I made the other day in the slow cooker in my homemade barbecue sauce. Normally by now I would have come up and had some milk of fear, but I haven't had anything since my coffee this morning. So before I eat the meat, I have a jar of milk of fear yogurt. I fermented the milk of fear and then I strained it through a nut milk bag to make yogurt of fear. And then I put about a half a cup to a cup of raw honey in here and it's been fermenting for about the last three or four weeks. Very satiating. I was just thinking this raw honey yogurt kefir. It really is like the land of milk and honey, except it's fermented. <laughs> it's so good.
already. Oh. Pretty sure this is what they call bedhead. I kind of get a combination of bedhead and big hair. I was laying in bed and I was thinking about comfort when I go on this upcoming hike. It's not gonna be a lot of comfort. I'm gonna have to make as much comfort as I can for the body. But comfort's not just a physical thing. More important than comfort is a mental thing. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, you came in to greet me. I have to make my bed and do my morning business. So I don't know if any of you have planted grass seed, uh, I'm just kind of winging it for here. I started by throwing some of my fertile compost on the ground and then I covered it with black soil. some grass seed and now I'm throwing more compost dirt over top so that the seeds will have nourishing soil in which to sprout and now I'm hand watering so that I don't drown the seeds and wash them away So here's the finished bread. This is the one with onion. You can see it's a little higher. It's very aromatic in its onion. And this is the one with the herbs. So this has rosemary, basil, oregano. I don't smell this as much as this just because onion, you know, is overpowering, right? Or at least more dominant in fragrance. Looking at the bread, you can see that this crusted beautifully. It's spread out which is kind of interesting. Again, the exact same dough folded and left to ferment on the counter the exact same amount of time and also refrigerated for the same amount of time. Now that we've seen the outside, this feels a little crunchier on the top. Let's take a look at the inside, at the crumb. Oh, now I smell the herbs. Wow, that's gonna be really good with a little butter and salt. And you can see, well, how about I show you the bigger one? A uniform crumb. This bread, cut into it. That crumb is porous, but if I compare it, it's not as porous as that. Oh, wow, that smells so 
so amazing. That's going to be good with butter and salt as well. Cheese might even go good with this. So if you choose to make these recipes, give me some feedback to let me know what your experience of that bread making process was for you. For me, I think this was a success all the way around. Two different breads, although it's the same foundation, decided to be created differently. And they're by the looks of it, I'm going to enjoy them both just as much. So that is today's Daily Bread.